Hi guys, originally I read the title incorrectly out of order, lol. <laughs> so now I'm gonna read it correctly. This is titled, The Other Side and Back, A Psychic's Guide to Our World and Beyond by Sylvia Brown and Lindsay Harrison. All right, thanks you guys. Thanks for allowing me to correct my blunders. <laughs> Love you guys, bye. And we're off to the races. That means I'm finally gonna start. <laughs> Here goes, introduction. Hi. This is Leah Black Dragon, and I'm a mother and grandmother, a veteran, <laughs> and proud and honored to read to you, my dear loved ones. We are going to start with number five, Betrayal, out of the book of the A Psychic's Guide to the Other Side. Our world and beyond and back that's hard to read it's kind of out of order and this is by Sylvia Brown which I love and adore and she I consider my true number one mentor of this life uh, written with Lindsay Harrison okay so we're gonna go to page 242 my dear loved ones that I love my lovely puppets and we're going to read number five betrayal and these are the 10 things we fear and why we shouldn't fear them okay so let's start this is a, a tough excuse me let me start again i don't care if there's bloopers because it gives you my uh personality <laughs> and uh, shows you my personality and heart, mind, and soul, and spirit. So no problem being transparent and messing up <laughs> and being a little funny. Okay, this subject is a tough one for me since I know firsthand what it's like to be betrayed by someone who swore he loved me while at the same time almost destroyed me. What is the most devastating form of betrayal, though, is the betrayal of self. We can betray ourselves in any number of ways by either ignoring signals from ourselves or by letting ourselves be swayed by something I call determinism. Simply put, determinism means letting someone else determine supposed facts about you, whether there's any evidence to support those facts or not. For example, one of the many fast, uh, facts, excuse me, start again. For example, one of the many facts my mother told me about myself when I was growing up is that I wasn't cut out to be a career woman. My only hope for success was a housewife and mother. Certainly, I love cooking and baking and decorating and caring for a home and all those other domestic things and being a mother and grandmother is the great joy of my life. But imagine how I would have betrayed myself and my spirit if I had allowed her determinism to keep me for my almost 50 years with all of you. I heard a psychic on TV the other day refer to doing readings as, quote, a living, end quote, I almost put my foot through the television screen. A living? It's an honor. It's a gift from God. To have let that gift go unexpressed, even for the sake of being a housewife and mother, which I found very worthwhile and fulfilling, would have been my ultimate self-betrayal. It's betrayal of self to let anyone, including yourself, arbitrarily define who you should be and what your supposed limits are. It's betrayal of self to let anyone, including yourself, demean you, abuse you, or make you doubt your goodness and potential. It's a betrayal of self to let anyone, including yourself, separate you from your gifts and your dreams and the joy of God's power in you. Here is a simple exercise to ease you toward the habit 
of paying attention to yourself and refusing to allow self-betrayal. Every time you hear yourself say or think any sentence that starts with the words, quote, I always wanted to, dot, 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 end quote, write it down. Keep adding to the list until there are five items on it, whether that takes hours, days, or weeks. Then, in a few peaceful minutes, go down the list one item at a time, and underneath it, write the honest answer to the question. Why haven't I? Beneath that, write the honest answer to the question. Quote, why don't I do it now? End quote you immediately spot the difference between legitimate reasons and lame excuses. Keep right on adding to your list as time goes by. If nothing else, the exercise will be a great way of keeping in touch with your dreams and goals and reminding you that it doesn't have to be too late to pursue them. It takes work and discipline and faith in yourself and God, but you can prevent and or overcome self-betrayal. Overcoming betrayal by someone you loved and trusted trusted, isn't so easy. I wish I could promise you that if you're smart enough or alert enough or careful enough or a good enough person, you'll never be betrayed. As it is, I can only promise you that you can, comma, sorry, that you can will and must survive if it happens to you it only if only to keep your betrayer from getting the added satisfaction of destroying you unfortunately good people are the easiest to betray for a perfectly logical reason because we see the world only through our own eyes and we assume that everyone thinks just like we do it doesn't occur to us to stay on constant alert for deceit and lies and backstabbing, particularly from someone we love who claims to love us. Francine, my spirit guide, told me years ago that all betrayals boil down to two basic motives. Greedy, I'm sorry, greed and vanity. Hold on, let me... Let me see something. Okay, I just want to make sure it's still recording. Okay, sorry. Okay, let me try that again. Francine, my spirit guide, told me years ago that all betrayals boil down to two basic motives, greed and vanity. I tried arguing with her and proving her wrong, but when you really cut through the twists and turns of every betrayal story, she's exactly right. It is always greed or vanity or both. Most of us would never value greed and vanity over love. There are those, however, who just don't get it that love, when felt and expressed in its most divine state, automatically shrinks greed and vanity to the petty, shallow, short-sighted nonsense they really are. I don't know about you, actually. Yes, I do. But when I take my last breath on this earth and head home, I'm looking forward to the peace of knowing that I, that I loved and loved well. I find it hard to imagine any peace in lying there thinking, quote, well, I may be alone. Everyone I ever cared about may hate me, but at least I was greedy and vain, end quote. Sadly, I doubt that you need me to give you examples of betrayal since you have probably experienced it on your own. If my clients are any indication, it happens every day to some of the nicest, brightest people. There is a spouse who leaves for a younger or wealthier alternative, greed and vanity. There is the best friend who violates your confidence behind your back invariably to damage your reputation and enhance their own as the professor of privileged information, greed and vanity. There is my experience, the estranged husband, who without my knowledge used my name and reputation to illegally seduce investors into a supposed 
quote, can't miss, end quote, business venture. Greed and vanity. For the record, I have since paid back every single dime to those investors. The stories are endless, and apparently, I regret to say, so is the inevitability of betrayal at some point in our lives. Recovery from betrayal is very much like recovery from a loved one's death. You go through denial, grief, anger, self-pity, self-recrimination. They can't be avoided, but keep an important goal in mind. Let yourself feel them for the purpose of getting them out of your system, not for obsessing over the betrayal to the point that you can't move on. There is life after betrayal. Take it from me. Here are a few tips, some of which I learned the hard way. Number one, the answer to, quote, how could I have been so gullible and stupid and blind, end quote, is, quote, by believing that everyone's mind and heart works like yours, end quote. They don't. It's that simple. There are other good people like you out there, and the sooner you pick yourself up and walk away, the sooner you'll find them. Second bullet point. The answer to, quote, how could they do this to me if they loved me, end quote, is, quote, their spirit has a longer way to go on its journey than yours does, or they wouldn't put so little value on love, end quote. It's their lesson to learn which they may or may not accomplish in this lifetime. It's not your job to teach them whether they want to learn it or not. They won't learn until they're ready, any more than a kindergarten student is ready to learn nuclear physics. Take a long, honest look, not at who you wanted him to be, but at who the evidence proves he really is. Recognize that his spiritual limits, not yours, excuse me, not yours, cause the betrayal to happen and let it go. Third bullet point, page 246. The adage, quote, actions speak louder than words, end quote, has become such a cliche that we forget how important it is. When there is a contradiction between what someone says and what she or he does, ignore the words. The truth is in the behavior every time. Hearing, I love you, from someone who's plunging a knife between your shoulder blades does not mean, quote, love is a knife between the shoulder blades. Let me read that again. Quote, love is a knife between the shoulder blades, end quote. It means, quote, this person is deliberately hurting me, and that's not love, exclamation point, end quote. Reven excuse me, revenge may be fun to fantasize about, but it's out of the question to act on it. There's a saying from Oriental philosophy I love, quote, if you set out for revenge, you might as well dig two graves, one for the other person and one for yourself, end quote. The major problem with revenge is that it requires your time, thoughts, and energy. When someone's betrayed you and caused you all this pain, don't you think you've devoted quite enough time, thoughts, and energy to them already without prolonging it and giving them even more power while you try to get even? Make no mistake, as long as someone is a focal point of your attention, you are giving them the message that they have power and importance in your life. The biggest insult you can pay someone isn't hatred, after all, it's apathy. Let's get something straight about the issue of forgiveness. Being a good spiritual person does not require you to forgive anything and everything someone does to you. Don't struggle with the unreasonable expectation that you can't move on or find peace about a betrayal until you've forgiven it. Yes, you can. The way you move on and find peace is to include in your prayers, quote, this one's too big for me, God. 
you handle it, end quote. He will. You can count on it. In the meantime, you'll be busy elsewhere because you have far better things to do than waste one more minute on someone who had their chance with you and blew it. Ending on page uh, 247, and I will stop there. And this is Leah Black Dragon signing off and hoping that this helped you, my own family, friends, uh, and uh, spouse, and twin flame. And just go with God, believe God, and um, just do everything right for yourself because you are a powerful God, whether you accept that or not. Much love, namaste. Take care wherever you are. Stay aware, stay alert. Watch closely. Bye-bye.